Welcome to Bible Talk. Uh, I want to thank you for tuning in today. What question for the day is, what do all these responses have in common? Judge ye not, be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. You don't know my story or you don't know my journey. Now, what I'll be doing uh, f f weekly is having a little talk, just a little sort of kind of like barbershop talk, barbershop talk uh, each week. And one of the things that uh, I like to deal with is Christian living. Uh, I think it's important that we live like, like God tell us to. Um, I'm one of those people that I live a victorious life, but I don't live a perfect life. There's a big difference. And when you confront uh, people who claim to be Christians, uh, one of the most commonly used uh, responses you will get is, judge ye not, be patient with me, God is not through with me yet, or you don't know my story. Well, now we can say that when it comes to other people, but I want I want to see if you apply this when it comes to your very own life. Um, because a lot of times when a uh, believer uh, issue a critique of another believer who's living uh, not according to the word of God, but living a sinful life, you have a lot of people uh, will, will, will get upset with the believer who's trying to correct the, the believer who is living in sin. And, and sometimes it can get uh, can get very contentious and sometimes it can be uh, sometimes it ruins relationships uh, uh, some people they when you get on them they they some people stop going to church some people don't want to be around believers but people God called us to live a holy life you know he you, you know what's the point of getting saved if you're going to do the same thing you was doing before you got saved uh, my one of my favorite scriptures therefore if any man be in Christ he's a new creature Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. See, and if you're going to live the Christian life, there are things that you're going to you're going to have to give up. You know, you can't expect to live a Christian life when you still got the same friends that that's doing the same thing uh, in the world, because it's easier for them to pull you back into the world than it is for you to get for them to, for you to get them to come to Christ. And so what I want to what I want to uh, do is put this judge ye not be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. And you don't know my story uh, to the test and see if the people that are saying that uh, really believe that or really follow that or a.k.a. do they practice what they preach. Now, I'm going to start out by asking a number of questions, because uh, when a person says they saved and every time you look around, they can commit sin after sin after sin over and over again and, and say, uh, uh, God, forgive me and, and, and just continue to sin. And the people who defend this nonsense, a lot of people that defend it, talking about, ain't nobody perfect. Judge ye not. Be patient with them. God is not through with them yet. You don't know their story. You don't know their, jer their journey. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to ask a series of questions. And uh, at the, hopefully at the end of this, uh, this uh, video, you will see, you, you will have a better understanding of why, uh, why believers like myself are so adamant about living the Christian life. Because you may be the only Bible that someone reads. People are looking at your life. See, because what happens is if you claiming to be a Christian and you live in any kind of way, no, people are not going to take, take God serious. They're not going to take the God you serve serious. And, 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 the, and, the, and the funny thing is that uh, every everybody that you probably met, they got stories of they would tell you that uh, I know a Christian who said they was Christian. They they was doing this and they was doing that. They was doing this. Every believer that's living right have to answer for those who are just constantly out there living in sin and don't care about their testimony. So uh, I know this angers some people because a lot of people we we, we got we live in this PC uh, don't offend uh, don't uh, 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 hurt anybody's feelings. We live in this this age now where uh, you're not allowed to tell people what's right or what's wrong. It's like uh, it's your truth and my truth, you know, but I say it's your truth and my truth. And then there is the truth, which is the word of God. So let's see. Let's let's test this theory out. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to start out. I'm going to start out and I'm going to ask the question. I want to see at the end at the end of all these questions. Uh, will you still feel the same way or will you apply this to your own life? 
Okay, like this is the same way that uh, when we continue to fall into sin, this is how this is what we do to God. Every time we sin and we fall back and we continue to do it and continue to do it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if you caught your spouse cheating and he or she said to you, judge ye not, be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. You don't know my story. You don't know my journey. Will you, will you respond by saying, I understand, I understand, carry on. God is not. <clears throat> God is not through with you yet. See, and if what if, and if they, and if uh, you caught your spouse uh, cheating a second time, and they say this, judge ye not, be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. You don't know my story. You don't know my journey. Will your response be once again? I understand. Carry on. God is not through with you yet. Now that's the third time. You caught your spouse cheating again, and, and you confronted them, and they said, Judge ye not, be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. You don't know my story or my journey. Would your response be? Uh, would you respond by saying, I understand. Uh, God is not through with you yet. Carry on. People, after a while, if, if a spouse did that, to, if, if one spouse did that to another, after, after a while, that spouse is not going to believe nothing uh, that, that, that their spouse is telling them. They're going to consider them a liar. They're not going to trust them. They're going to they're going to think that they're not genuine. Such the same way when we're talking about living a Christian life. If, if Christians do anything they want to do and there's no conviction, uh, the Bible said uh, uh, that those he loves, he chasten, chastise. So in other words, if you're a child, you claim to be a child of God and you out there just willy nilly freely living in sin and you have not been chastised out there, then the Bible said, the Bible is referred to you as a bastard. Look it up. See, and, and, and no one is going to take you seriously, pretty much like with your spouse. If you keep telling them, okay, uh, uh, judge ye not, uh, be patient with me, God is not through me yet, you don't know my story, you don't know my journey. If they keep telling you that, after a while you're going to say, oh, you got to be kidding me. And many of you know this. You know that you, don't, you won't even allow that in your own personal lives. You won't allow somebody to continue to play with your feelings. Most of you be headed right for divorce court. But this is what you ask in believers who are living a victorious life to accept when a, when a, a believer is, is backslidden and constantly sin, uh, sinning and living a, a, a perverted lifestyle. But you want us to accept them as, as you accept them as being legitimate. See, so and when you won't even accept it in your own life. And so uh, we, we have to uh, really take a real good look at that. See, when we apply it directly to our lives, it's totally different than we just looking, looking on the outside, just looking at somebody and say, hey, hey, be patient with that person. Hey, don't judge that person. See, when this person continues to commit sin, but they want to be taken seriously, I think not. Now, also, if your spouse took money from the home and gambled it away and you confronted them and they said, let's hear it. Judge ye not, be patient with me. God is not through me yet. You don't know my journey. Would your answer be, I understand. God, God is not through with you. Carry on. Would that be your response? Okay, let's say if your spouse took money for the second time uh, and gambled, gambled it away. Okay? And you confronted them again, and their response was, judge ye not. Be patient with me. God is not through me yet. You don't know my story. You don't know my journey. Would that be your response? Okay, let's try it again. Let's say if the person, if, if the spouse uh, took money from the home and, and uh, gambled it away for a third time, and you mad, you just mad, you confront them again, and, uh, uh, you come, and you came and you confronted them again, they said, wait a minute now, judge ye not. Be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. You don't know my story. You don't know my journey. You see how preposterous that, you see how crazy that sounds? This is what you're asking victorious believers, victorious living believers to accept when someone said that Christian, and that's all they do is sin. You know, we can't tell anybody nothing is wrong anymore. And that's the problem because we're living in a society now 
Well, if you tell somebody wrong, you, and you're not allowed, you're not supposed to hurt a person's feeling. You're just supposed to go along and get along. See, the Bible tells us how we should live, people. The Bible tells us how we should live. If it's, there's no way in the world you're going to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and you out there just f sinning and freely sinning and you're not being, you're not being convicted. Now, that's Bible. Those he loves, he, he, he chastised. If you're not it's suffering no chastise, I see a lot of y'all, uh, oh, God forbid, but a lot of y'all on judgment, they're going to be really surprised when you stand before God. See, when you stand before God, when you really didn't get saved, what you really did, you just got enlightened. You didn't come. You didn't really uh, uh, give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. All you did was heard something, uh, got felt good for that moment, but you never truly placed your trust in Christ. See, now it's time to stop playing these games. You know, especially during this pandemic, people are dying every day. This is not the time nor the, nor the place to be to continue to play this game. One day you're going to die one day. You're going to die one day. And you got to stand before the Lord. And my question is, where do you stand? See, when you stand before God, it ain't no more judge ye not. <laughs> be patient with me, God. No, it ain't no more of that. There will be no more. All that, all that is gone. You will not have another opportunity. See, because once you die, your decision is already made. See? And so, <clears throat> and so that's what that's what uh, uh, that's why I, I I constantly try to preach Christian living. We see we don't see the churches don't preach Christian living anymore. See, we allow people to do do something, do whatever they want to do, and don't want to preach against anything. You know, you don't even hear hell preached in the churches anymore. See, you don't even hear that anymore. All you hear is uh, feel these feel good uh, gospel. That's you know. That's all you hear is feel good gospel. Come on, God understand. Come on and come to church and get to work and work for the Lord. When these people have not even been saved yet. See, what am I talking about? Judge ye not, be patient with me. God is not through me yet. You don't know my story. You don't know my journey. And see, I'm going to ask you this too as well. Like what if, uh, if, if, what if your spouse <laughs> took the money uh, no, what if your spouse, when they got paid, uh, took their paycheck and blew it all on drugs and you confronted them and they look you in the eyes and says, judge ye not, <laughs> be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. You don't know my story. You don't know my journey. Would your, would your response be? I understand. God ain't through with you yet. He's still working on you. Carry on. Okay. Let's try that again. Let's see if your spouse, once they got paid, took their whole paycheck and blew it on drugs for the second time. And you come to them and you, and, and you confront them again and say, hey, what are you doing? And he looks you or he or she looks you in the eyes and says, judge ye not. Be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. You don't know my story. You don't know my journey. Hmm. Would, once again, would your response be, I understand. Uh, God is still working on you. Uh, carry on. See, now, let's say, that, it, 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 now, would that be your response? Let's try that for a third time. If they blew their paycheck on drugs for the third time, and you running up to them, you mad, oh, you mad, you ready to fight now. You wonder why they don't continue to blow their money on drugs when, instead of taking care of the necessity at home. If your spouse did that, and you ran up on them a third time, and they looked you and I with dead serious telling you, judge ye not, be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. You don't know my story. You don't know my journey. Would your response be, I understand. Uh, God is not through with you yet. <laughs> uh, he's still working on you. Carry on. People, you seen how, see how, how ludicrous that, ludicrous that sounds? You see how, see how crazy that sounds? This is what you're asking a, believe, a victorious living believer to accept when a believer constantly saying the same thing. Some people saying, uh, some people uh, saying, judge ye not and uh, be patient with me. God's not through, me, through with me yet. Yeah, you don't know my story. You know my journey. And these people have been doing the same thing for over 20 years. 
They've been doing the same thing for over 20 years and they still hollering, judge ye not, be patient with me. See, we got to stop this and see, we got to stop letting these people slide with this stuff. See, because they represent, if they represent the true living God, the one that, 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 that you serve, you can't give these people a pass. And I know everybody wants to be liked. You know, I, I get that. But when it comes to the gospel, you need to tell the truth. See, because uh, 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 there's, there's love in the truth. See, you tell a person the truth because you love them. Now, and and, let, and let's be, let me be honest with you. No believe, no victorious living believer like to tell, like to confront another believer about living in sin. They're concerned not only, they're, they're concerned about uh, these, their, their, their uh, 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 testimony. More, most believers say, hey, look, you represent the God you say I represent. You know, come on now, you, you, you putting God to shame all over again. Living like that. See, we got to stop this, people. See, and many of you have used the same term. Whenever you're caught in sin, the first thing come out of your mouth is what? Judge ye not. Be patient with me. God is not through me yet. You don't know my story. Well, that's not much of a story if you continue to do, do what you're doing. If you continue to fall into sin, what kind of story is that? But see, the, the, the problem with that story, we know how this story ends. We know how this story ends. See, because when you play with sin, you're going to end up broken. See, the devil, the devil is, is a slick character. He'll make you think something's, oh, it's not that bad. Oh, it's not bad if I drink just a little bit. See, then the next day, oh, let me drink a little bit more. Oh, let me drink a little bit more. And, 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 and most of you, uh, a small percentage of you end up alcoholic and, and some of you you may not never end up an alcoholic but you still you start to have a little problem with drinking or you or you start to minimize the minimize it like it's not that bad and once you start uh, uh, minimizing the effect of uh, uh, sin that's when the devil got you see this is why people run to run to run to uh, use these responses they want to make the person who's who's uh trying to correct them feel guilty Judge ye not, be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. You don't know my story. I know your story. I, the problem is I know your story all too well. You're a double-minded person. And the Bible says a double-minded man is, un, uh, uh, is unstable in all their ways. You, you, you want to try to live in the world. You want to have one feet in the world and one feet, and one feet in the church. Or one feet in, in Christ. It don't work that way. See, either you're saved or you're not saved. There's no middle ground. See, a lot of people are going to be surprised. A lot of people are going to come before that judgment seat, uh, judgment seat of Christ, uh, and then they're going to they really be surprised. And, then, and, and a lot of you think this, you know, that, uh, you know, a lot of, some people have this, this, this vision of when they stand before God, they think that how, like somehow that when they stand before God, they're going to stand before God and they think that he's going to say, look on this side and say, if I got more good works than I got bad works, I'm going to make it in. No, you will not. Isaiah said that our righteousness are like filthy rags. You can't work your way into heaven. If you work, if you can work your way into heaven, you'll brag your way all the way out. See? This is why it's so important. We have to, we have to confront this nonsense. The devil is, is taking people out of here so fast now. They with this pandemic, all this other stuff. You got a lot of little people losing their lives every day. And we still talking this PC nonsense. Politically correct, political correctness. We're still talking this nonsense instead of giving people the Bible. The Bible, the Bible said, come from among them and be ye separate. Look. If you're a child of God, you, you have to live a separate life because what's the point? If I can do whatever I want to, uh, if, I'm, if I can do whatever I wanted to, what's the point of coming to Christ? What's the point of coming to Christ if you're going to do whatever you want to anyway? 
See? What am I talking about? Judge ye not. Be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. You don't know my story. See? And that's all. And people love that. I mean, people eat that up because it makes them it, it makes them feel like, OK, I got him now because uh, cause he, he don't know if God working on me or not. Really? Really? Some of you have been uh, saying using these these responses for over 20 something, 20 years. So at what point did you say, well, you know what? I need to get my life right. See, when you do something, when you do something uh, f over 20 years, that's not struggling. That's a lifestyle. That's a lifestyle. That's not struggling with nothing. That's a lifestyle that you don't want to give up. See. It's, 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 it's get it, people, we have to wake up. We got to start telling people the truth. We have to keep, tell, we have to tell people the truth. See, we have to confront sin. See, because we know, you, you look at the scriptures, look at the scriptures. Whenever someone falls in sin, look at their life, look at their life once sin take hold of them. Many of you right now out there, Use the same responses. Judge ye not. Be patient with me. God's not through with me yet. You don't know my story. And I'm miserable because you know why? You don't turn your back on God. You don't start doing some of the same old things you used to do. And now you wonder why your prayer life, uh, none of your prayers have been answered. You wonder why you, when you read the word of God, it does, you, 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 you can't understand or, you, or there's nothing. It's just real dry. And you're wondering why. You wonder why you, your, your, your prayer life is horrible. Because, you, because you're living in sin. The scripture said that God said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, he would not hear us. You can't live in sin and expect a blessing, expect, a, uh, uh, expect God to hear, listen to your prayer and, and, and you living in open sin. See, he said, he, he, he said, if we confess our sins, his faithful justice give us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Man, get it right. Confess that sin and move on from that sin. See, you know you don't practice in your life. You know if someone is mistreating you and they continue to mistreat you and every time you confront them and, and, and they say, judge ye not, be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. You don't know my journey. You know good and well. You're not going to continue to listen to that. And like I said earlier, if you're married and your spouse is doing that to you, you know good and well, you'll be headed right straight for divorce court. But this is what, you, but see, now you don't, if you don't, if you don't allow this in your own life, in your own personal life, why, why would you allow, allow it in your Christian walk? You should hold that even more sacred because it's a personal relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You should honor that even more than your own personal life. See, you asking God to allow something that you won't allow. See, it's time. To, it's time to stop. And I know a lot of you don't is not going to like this, like what I'm saying. But that's okay. That's okay. I don't look for likes. <laughs> I'm not trying to make friends. I try to. I try to tell the truth. Because I care more about what God thinks than what man. Man can't, man can't, man, man can't do nothing to me. Man has no heaven, no hell to put anybody in. See? And, and, and it's funny, the, I, I noticed this over the years. The only people that use these responses, just you not be patient with me, God is not through with me yet, you don't know my journey, are the people who are living in sin. I've never heard of a believer that's, that's living victoriously, uh, at the time, at the time use, uh, living victoriously, use these phrases, use these uh, responses. 
If you living for the if you living for the Lord, you don't need that. You don't need to use that. And even if you are a believer and you slip, you're gonna go confess it. You ain't gonna justify it. You're not gonna justify it. And so people, we have to stop. We really have to stop and and, and take account of our lives and, and see if we're walking the way God wants us to walk. We really have to take account of our lives. You don't understand, when you claim to be a Christian, people watch you, trust me, people watch you. They sit there watch. They may not never say anything, but they're watching you. You claim to be a Christian and you go and all your friends are unsaved. You're hanging out with unbelievers and going to these clubs and bars like it ain't nothing, but then you want them to respect you as a Christian. Really? Judge ye not. Be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. You don't know my story. You don't know my journey. Now, that uh, talk right there was for believers. Now, what I want to say, I want to talk to the non-believers. Listen. If you're not a child of God, this don't even apply to you because you're on your way to hell without Christ. If you don't have a personal relationship with Christ, you're on your way to hell. See, and what I like to do in all of my video is uh, give what they call the sinner's prayer. If you know right now while you're sitting there, you know full well that if you wish to die today, that hell, hell will be your home. People, there is an escape. You can escape. You don't have to go to hell. You, the reason why people go to hell, they choose to go to hell. Now, what I'm going to do, this, this is the most important time. I ask all those of you who listen, just, 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 just listen. Just listen to me very carefully. This is the most important. I know some of the things I said was important, but this is the most important part of this video. You know, it's, I'm going to pray this simple prayer. If you accept Christ, to accept Christ your Savior. See? Because you won't get a second chance. This tonight may be your last night. This may be the last, this may be your last day on earth. So I, I, I ask that you would give me a bow your head. And it's a, sentence, it's, a, it's a simple prayer. Nothing magical about the words. It's the attitude of the heart. If you know that you that you that you are uh, on your way to hell and you want to escape hell, I want you to pray this prayer for me with me. It says, Dear God, I confess that I'm a sinner, that I can't save myself. I believe that Jesus died and rose again. Father God, forgive me for my sin. Please send your son Jesus into my heart and save me. <laughs>